Hey guys, Bass Geek here, and I'm going to talk to you about one of the best times of year to throw a jig. That's right, I said throw a jig in September. Now, I know everybody's wanting to talk about fall fishing, getting hot for fall fishing, ready for, you know, that, that bite and our kin on shad and all this fun stuff. And, you know, wanting to throw that top water early in the morning, which is great. I love to throw that top water early in the morning. But a jig in September can really pay off for you if you're throwing it at the right time for the right reasons under the right conditions. So a few years back, six, eight years ago, I was doing some research into jigs, into crawfish and their colors, you know, and as how they change throughout the year. For the most part where I live, it's generally a brown, a green pumpkin, uh, watermelon red. They might have a little bit of orange in the fall, a little bit of blue in the, in the uh, spring or summer. Uh, but for the most part, that green pumpkin is the deal where I live. Now, all that being said, what I also found out in a great seminar is that the crawfish, the young crawfish, three years and less, tend to molt, you know, several times throughout the year. Now, one of the misconceptions is that they only molt on the full moon that is true they do molt on the full moon but they can molt for a lot of different reasons uh under a lot of different conditions stress can cause them to molt a lot of food growing you know of course can cause them to molt and what molting is is they shed their exoskeleton their skin their shedding so there's a lot of different reasons that they'll molt for the most part the adult crayfish the big boys are only going to molt about twice a year. So we're talking three years and above, right? They tend to molt one time in the spring. That's a whole nother video we can talk about at another time. And one time during September, during the full moon. Now, even if they're not molting during September and the full moon, they will come out. They're going to be a little extra active, just like everything else. They're going to start feeding up for the fall and the winter, right? But wait, there's more. So in September, the TVA tends to start dropping the lake levels. When they drop the lake levels, those crayfish, since they can live both in and out of water, a lot of times they'll live close to the surface of the water. What'll end up happening is as the lake level drops, those crayfish will come out and you'll have a mass migration into deeper water so every time the lake level drops quickly you'll have a lot of crayfish that are on the move and active so that's another great time to throw the jig so you if you can get both of those things together full moon and the uh lake level dropping it can be a great jig bite a great jig bite and i'll show you right here you know if you're in dirtier water, and generally this time of year, I do like maybe a touch of orange, but 90% of the time, guys, it's just a good old green pumpkin with something that is a little more active too. So when we, it comes to trailers, I'm gonna go with a big trailer and something with a little more active. Like I love to throw the uh, bio spawn, um, what is it, the bio crawl? on the back of a jig this time of year. A rage crawl is fine. That's the sort of thing that I wanna throw on a jig right now. I want a lot of action. The temperatures are cooling. We're talking about a lot of, uh, we're talking about a lot of movement, a lot of activity during that full moon and during that lake level drop. So we're talking about a lot of movement out of the crawfish. And a lot of times guys, Unless there's like a lay down or some grass around these areas, a lot of times I'm going to target rock transitions. And I like rock transitions where they've got some sort of soft bottom 
then to a rock transition. So it can be chunk rock to clay bank or mud bank or pea gravel bank, uh, something like that. So I want rock that these, that these uh, crayfish can get under, you know, flat rock so that they can shed and some sort of softer bottom so that they can burrow for the winter. So that's the two types of places, as I'm just throwing my rod around, that's the two types of places that I'm really looking for, those transitions. Crawfish, crayfish, crawdads, whatever you want to call them, that's what they're looking for is those rock transitions. Now, let's talk about my rod rail line setup. And again, guys, you can have a flipping stick. If there's some wood, generally I will have one out and I'll have me another jig out just in case there's heavier cover. But this is just kind of my cast and drag and I like to use two different types of jigs. Uh, my go-to jig, you know, if you've ever seen my uh, jigs uh, for the beginner, my Jigs 101 video, you'll know that this is one of my favorites, and that's just an archy style, a casting style. Some people call it a flipping, some people call it a skipping, but in the olden days, when these first come out, this is an archy style jig, and all it is, let me get you a close look, is it's just a nice wide head. This head will do just about anything. You can skip it under docks, great place to target for those crawfish. Um, but it comes across wood great. If you're pitching around wood, this is definitely the bait for you. Uh, anyway, all that being said, as you can see, good old green pumpkin on there, got me a rage bug on there, giving it good, you know, a good amount of bulk because we're talking about the big crayfish coming out around the new moon, or full moon, sorry. My other favorite jig for this is a football head jig. I tend to lean more toward that arky head because when I'm throwing a football head jig, generally I'm dragging it. I'm dragging it and I'm wanting that to set up. This I'm not going to be dragging. I'm going to throw out there. I'm going to give it a couple of small hops. So generally this is going to be what I'm going to. Now, if you, you've got more confidence in a, in a uh, football head, feel free. Either one of those baits are going to work. This is gonna work around, you know, some stumps and timber a little bit better than a football head jig will. Uh, again, it's kind of the best all around do all, as I call it, the four by four of uh, baits out there. Now let's talk about rod, reel and line. This is my brand new jig setup and I am loving it because a lot of times guys, when I'm throwing, especially up shallow, I back off. Even if I want a big jig, you know, a, a bulky jig, this time of year, I still may back down to a, you know, because I want a, a slower fall. I still back down to that three eighths. That's kind of my go-to when I'm casting this, even down to a quarter. Uh, I, a three eighths or a half ounce generally is my go-to. And this rod handles it very well. This is a, a, a really nice rod. This is the Psycho Stick from Akuma. It's a 7.5. It is a heavy action, but this thing has a great tip. I can cast a quarter ounce and a three eighths ounce with no problem whatsoever. I pair that up with my favorite reel from Akuma, and that's the Helios SX. And guys, I like a fast reel. When I'm casting out there and I'm bottom bouncing, I like a fast reel. This is an eight one to one, okay? Seven five allows me to get a good cast, allows me to be still have an accurate cast, but it allows me to take up a lot of line, and it allows me to set the hook and uh, get the fish in quickly with an eight one-to-one -one reel. Guys, this, this rod, this psycho stick is literally insane. Uh, it's, it's so light. I mean, you just don't even feel it. But that is what I like. Now, line, generally I'm going fluorocarbon. You know how I am, unless I'm fishing grass, it's 100% fluorocarbon. I do have a braid backing on. I never cast down to the braid. That's what backing is. It's not a leader, it's backing. 
It's just down there to take up space. So this generally, depending on the watercolor, 15 pound test, okay? I'm not gonna throw this around a lot of stuff. If I'm, if I'm around docks and that sort of stuff, that's when I'm gonna pick up my meat stick, my flipping stick with a jig on it, okay? Or my skipping rod that I have. Um, generally 15 to 17 pound test. Don't go, if you're casting a jig, don't go crazy heavy, okay? You're going to get more bites. 15 pound test, guys. 15 pound test. If you're casting a jig out there, you should not break off. Retie. Cut and retie if your, if your line starts to fray. It's that simple. All right. So let's go and I will show you what I mean by rock transitions. Okay, guys, so this is kind of what I'm talking about. You know, there's a lot of different rock transitions, but this would be a spot that I'd really like to stop. We got a little pocket back here. We got some clay mud up here. Perfect place for where the crawdads are going to burrow. But you got some nice flat rock, and there's some nice chunk rock underneath it. And so basically, these are going to be the places that I'm going to look for. I like rock transitions, transitions where you've got a little bit of dirt, a little bit of mud something where you're going to be able to you know find these crayfish while they're molting they're going to use that rock that flat rock to kind of molt on uh, one of the things that's always good too if you look right over here is you can actually see a lay down right there so you got a nice little lay down a lot of rock behind it and then your transition right here and you've got your you know kind of clay slash chunk rock so this is a nice little place just to come up make a few casts and go you you want that rock that combination of rock and dirt that's the big key in september when you're trying to find these jig fish And you'll know, you'll notice I will generally not fish this very slow. You know, I'm looking for these aggressive fish. Just trying to get that bait up there and just really work it back. Just short hops. I don't want to move that bait too much. At one time, but I'm not stopping it a whole lot either. Like I said, make sure you look for those transitions. Make sure you look for those rocks. They love to molt on those flat rocks. And generally it's gonna be, you know, as always, three days before, three days after, that's when they'll come out in September. And then when the water starts to drop, another great time. All right, so that's really all there is to it. I'm telling you, September, when the large cray, crawdads, crayfish, mud bugs, whatever you want to call them, when they come out, tie on a bulky jig around the full moon, and you will, I'm telling you, you will not be uh, upset with the outcome. As always, questions and comments in the comments section below. You guys know I love to talk about fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe if I can spit it out. Make sure you hit that bell so that you get the notifications when these videos come out. And as always, you guys rock.